The broadcast is now starting. All attendees are in listen-only mode. Good afternoon. This is Alyssa Wistrell. I'm the Executive Director with the Academic Collaborative for Integrative Health, formerly known as ACAC and also called the Collaborative or ACIH. And uh, we have a presentation that is representative of both ACIH or the Collaborative and COMPTA, the Commission on Massage Therapy Accreditation, to talk about membership benefits um, in a macro sense, but also our presentations, which we'll walk you through, will give you uh, some specific information uh, about the both organizations from a mission vision orientation and uh, will give you some context for how we are related to each other, ACIH and COMTA. As you can see, we have three other speakers um, on this initial slide and uh, they will have an opportunity to introduce themselves in just a minute. We have Dale Healy, uh, COMTA commissioner and ACIH board member, Don Hogue, who is COMTA acting executive director and Cliff Korn, who is COMTA chair. Just a few housekeeping items. You all are uh, in listen only mode right now. You're muted by default. Um, we expect that this presentation will take about 40 minutes for us to get through the slides. And uh, we have, so we'll have ample time for Q&A. In the meantime, if something uh, strikes you that you'd like to ask, please raise your hand on your, uh, on your, you know, click on your hand icon so that uh, we can take note of it and then unmute you when we get to our Q&A section. Okay. So here we are um, down below, the people that will be speaking today and uh, takeaways listed here uh, for COMPTA, um, the importance of specialized accreditation for massage and body work at schools and programs. Uh, COMPTA endorse curriculum and join accreditation process and uh, COMPTA as a comprehensive resource for the profession. And then uh, and COMPTA is going to be uh, going uh, first after this slide I'll, I'll, and after we introduce each other. So there'll be a series of slides that COMPTA will be speaking to both Don Hogue and Cliff Korn. And then uh, Dale Healy and I will uh, take you through the collaborative slides after that, during which we'll give you an orientation to our mission for interprofessional education, which is really the connective tissue that joins our two organizations. Um, that is how we synchronize, you know, our interests um, for the massage therapy profession and for the collaborative as a whole. Um, and we'll talk about benefits of individual college membership in the collaborative and we also have our director of working groups, Beth Rosenthal, with us today. We didn't know that she would be able to join us, but she is. And so she'll speak a little bit to the opportunities for engagement in our three working groups and clinical research and education working groups. So with that, um, I'd like our speakers to introduce themselves. And if Cliff Korn, you could uh, give a brief introduction, please. Sure. Um... I am Cliff Korn, and I'm a retired practitioner, and for those who don't yet know me, I have the pleasure and honor to chair the Commission on Massage Therapy Accreditation, commonly known as COMTA. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Cliff. Dale Healy. Hi, everybody. I'm Dale Healy. I'm, uh, at, uh, I'm the uh, Dean of the College of Health and Wellness at Northwestern Health Sciences University and uh, oversee the massage therapy program here and have for the last uh, 16 years. And I've got the privilege of uh, serving on both uh, both COMPTA as a commissioner and then also on the uh, board of directors for ACIH and uh, just got a tremendous amount of um, appreciation for both of those organizations and uh, what they are what we are trying to do collectively for the profession and uh, thrilled to be on this uh, webinar today and uh, help those attending to understand a little bit more about what uh, what both organizations do and the opportunities for uh, for schools. So thanks again for, for being here. Thank you, Dale. And Don Hogue. 
Yeah, thank you, Alyssa. Um, I'd like to echo what Dale just said about my excitement um, for this opportunity. I am the Acting Executive Director for the Commission on Massage Therapy Accreditation. I've been in that role for about a year now. And prior to that, I was the chair of the commission and have been a commissioner. I had been a commissioner since 2012. So I've been involved with Compta for many years now, going back to 2007 as a volunteer. And I come to Compta from a practitioner, a massage therapist, a school administrator, and an educator. So um, again, I think there's a lot of opportunities for our two organizations to um, really work together and bring all of our resources uh, to our community. So thank you so much for this opportunity. That's great. Thank you, Don. Uh, and for me, I am new with the collaborative. I joined as executive director back in April of this year and uh, have really enjoyed the immersion into interprofessional education and interprofessional care, the context of which um, ACIH's mission and vision is focused on. And uh, I'll be explaining a little bit more, of course, when we get to our section about our membership and how it's constituted and and how we work together um, to support one another's goals and objectives with professional pathways. Uh, uh, so other than that, I can tell you that my background previous to joining the collaborative as ED was in the nonprofit arena with the Integrative Health Policy Consortium. Uh, and I was executive director there for four years. It's how I got my feet wet in the uh, nonprofit world, they're a 501c4 and ACIH is a 501c3, which uh, gives us a clear educational mandate and purpose. So prior to that, I was in the corporate sector as a consultant and also as an executive with uh, homeopathic and herbal manufacturing uh, companies working in sales, uh, marketing, uh, and regulatory aspects of those businesses. And I did that uh, for many years until I got more immersed in public health and uh, and sort of reoriented myself away from bottom line focus, um, even though I love the, the work in the space of supplements and homeopathic medications and so on, and I was able to focus on uh, the bigger picture um, through policy and now through education with um, ACIH in the academic world. So with that, um, we can now move into Compta's um, section. Thank you, Eliza. Um, Compta deals with uh, both the massage and body work world and the aesthetics world. And more and more, the role of massage and aesthetic schools is to ready individuals in the world of integrative health. Uh, medical aesthetics has gained much emphasis in the last decade or so, and there's now significant evidence on the benefits of massage therapy uh, in both rehabilitative care and pain management. So as this trend continues, uh, we find our practitioners working side by side, uh, not only with allopathic and osteopathic physicians, but also chiropractors, naturopaths, acupuncturists, etc. And that's really why I'm so excited today to have Compton ACIH partner in this, what I consider very valuable webinar. Uh, both organizations can be essential elements in a school's preparation of tomorrow's problem solvers. Um, so really with that brief introduction, I'm delighted to turn over the meat of this presentation to some recognized experts from both Compton and ACIH. And uh, Dawn, you're up. Okay, great. Thank you, Cliff. And, you know, Dale, as you said, you have the you have the privilege of being involved with both of our organizations. So I invite you to um, add any other details uh, as as we go through the slides that uh, that you'd like to in terms of your experience and perspective from Compta. Sounds good. So just, yeah, I'll do that. Yeah. Thanks. Great. Sure. So um, hi again, everyone. Um, I'm really excited to be able to share with you um, about Compta, who we are, what we do, and and what makes us unique. Um, and some of you on the on the webinar might know us, um, but for those of you who do not, again, this is a great opportunity to uh, introduce ourselves to you and hopefully start a relationship. So what you see on the screen right now is our mission and our vision. 
And this, um, both of these, we actually revised earlier this year, back in the spring. And so um, they're, they're especially meaningful um, for us because uh, they do reflect sort of a, a renewed um, inspiration with our values and, and what we're here to do. Um, as you see, our mission is to elevate and uphold the standards of excellence in our profession. Um, and, and our scope does also include aesthetics as well. And the benefiting of students, schools, practitioners, and the public. That wide and broad um, perspective on the community and who our work touches is something you're going to hear um, throughout my, my part of this presentation. Our vision statement is especially poignant that all quality massage therapy, body work, and aesthetics institutions or programs are accredited by COMTA. That is our vision. Um, currently, massage therapy schools and programs, it's very inconsistent from state to state of whether accreditation is required for a school. So that's why um, our vision is so important to us right now, that all of them are. A little bit about our history. I've got this in, in a couple of slides here. I'm not going to go through it with you word for word, but I thought it was important um, to reflect to you all the evolution and the growth that Comta has gone through um, and what will be our 30-year anniversary next year in 2019. So you can see from this slide um, a little bit of detail about how we grew out from the AMTA Council of Schools back in the early 1980s. Um, that was an opportunity for educators and, and school directors to uh, convene and explore the quality of massage therapy education, the profession in general. And at that time, especially to develop uh, a, a educational standards that could be applied consistently um, to programs across the country. In 1989, again, we're still back in the 80s, um, COMTA with two A's was established. Um, and uh, we did, again, implement those standards, policies, and procedures. And that was the beginning of our working towards recognition from the oh. Department of Education. So that took place throughout the 90s, and in 1996, uh, the first commission was seated for COMTA, again, with two A's at that time, accreditation and approval is what the extra A stood for. Um, in 97, we officially changed our name to the Commission on Massage Therapy Accreditation. We got our recognition from the United States Department of Education in 20, 2002. In 2004, we became a completely independent organization standing on our own, and since that time, we have continued to um, renew our recognition with the Department of Education, which itself is, is essentially like going through the accreditation process. It's what we do to maintain our recognition for our schools. Um, we will have another renewal coming up. We'll start that process next year. And in 2020, hopefully we will be granted for another five year um, period with no, um, with no conditions or follow up reports required. Yes, look at those lovely people on the slide. That is our group of current commissioners and staff. There is one person not pictured there. Her name is Beverly Giroux. She is our massage therapy practitioner on the commission. Um, and we just welcomed four new members to our board. So um, I love to see all the new faces and, of course, some of those that uh, have been with COMTA for many, many years. The next slide actually has all of our names and our titles, again, who we are, what we do. Um, and you'll notice that um, we do have specific roles that are required on our commission because we are a specialized accrediting agency. And so that pertains specifically to our profession. So we are required to have educators from our field, practitioners from our field, um, administrators that work in schools that are um, immersed in our profession. And of course, public members, 
We have uh, an employer represented on our board as well as a regulator. All of those positions, of course the ones that are required, but all of them serve a valuable function on our board to help us stay connected to the profession as a whole, as well as to the consumer public um, that we are here to serve. So um, I am very proud and honored to work with all of those individuals' names that you see and those uh, faces that you saw on the slide before. Now this one uh, goes into a little bit more detail about uh, the different roles between the staff and the commission. And I, I realize that um, on the left-hand side of the screen with staff, uh, there you see my name, the acting executive director, Angie Meyer, uh, her title is actually Director of Accreditation, so I apologize for um, not catching that title change. Uh, so Angie and I work together on the day-to-day -day operations. Angie is our front line for customer service. Um, of course, all of our work relates to our compliance with the Department of Education and um, directly working with our commission on everything from budget to marketing, um, to of course the commission decisions and policies and procedures. Uh, what I really wanted to emphasize on this slide is that our staff, and, and I think it's a similar, a similar case with ACIH, that our staff is from our profession. Um, so of course our board is, as I was just describing, but our staff is as well. And I think that that is one thing that certainly makes us unique. We understand our customers. We are massage therapists. We are practic practitioners, of course, educators. Angie and I both come from the school community. So we know exactly what our members and our potential members are facing, the issues that are important to them, and I think we utilize that experience, again, to really give um, the best customer service that we can. Now, our commissioners, I, I love that Cliff describes us as like, you know, the twin engines here, and both sides are necessary for, uh, for the machine to operate at its optimum capacity. The commissioners are volunteers, some of whom are elected, some are appointed, and again, they represent the different viewpoints from our profession, academics, educators, practitioners, both from the massage side as well as the aesthetics side. Um, the employer and the regulator, uh, very important for us to stay connected to um, that side of our profession to know what's happening in the regulatory world, as well as to know what employers are looking for in therapists that are graduating from our schools. So, um, you know, we, we represent different viewpoints, but we all work together for the good of the massage and aesthetics professions. A little bit about the accreditation options that come to offers. Uh, both institutional and programmatic. Many of you on the call might be familiar with those types of accreditation. For some of you that might not be as familiar with that, institutional accreditation applies to um, just what it sounds like, the institution as a whole. That would be for a standalone um, massage therapy program or aesthetics school. Um, it's going to cover everything from admissions to advertising to faculty to graduation rates to alumni uh, support. Institutional accreditation covers everything from A to Z and then some. Programmatic accreditation is specific to a massage program that would be contained in a larger say, for example, a community college or um, a larger health science university like where Dale works. A massage program that's a part of a larger institution would be appropriate for the programmatic status of accreditation. What is, uh, I think, Compta's you know, claim to fame, our, our biggest uh, distinction among other accrediting agencies is that we are the only agency that is recognized by the Department of Education as specialized in massage therapy and body work as well as aesthetics. So that is, is again, something that we really, I said our claim to fame, but it's, it's really what we want to highlight about ourselves, what makes us unique, and, and, you know, that's really what has enabled us to be 
a member of ACIH, the fact that we are the specialized accrediting agency for our profession. It's something we're very, very proud of. Um, and unique to us related to that specialized status is our curriculum competencies. And so that's, a, that's, that's an outline of what we require our schools and programs to include in their curriculum. We do not specify how many hours they have to have in certain content areas, but just content that must be included. Again, that's pertinent to our profession. The other thing that's unique to Compta, and I spoke about this as I was describing the commission, is that we have practitioners and educators on our decision-making body. That's not always what you find with other accrediting agencies that aren't specific to the profession that they accredit. So um, I think that's very important for everyone on the call to be aware of. Accreditation itself, again, for those of you that know the process, you've been through this. <laughs> uh, and, and it's really a two-part process, the self-study and then the peer review, which includes an on-site visit. And I will really tell you, I think the self-study process is so extremely valuable. I know many schools find it, you know, pretty anxiety filled and you know it can it can have a perception of being very stressful and and that can be it's a lot of work but it's so worth it from the standpoint of just that self review self assessment um really taking a look and an examination at your program or your school how are you meeting the standards and if there's something that needs to be improved how can you how can you do that um, so I find that self-study process to be immensely valuable, and it's really all around uh, looking at our accreditation standards and answering questions about how your program or institution meets those standards, how you do what you do to meet our standard. Um, again, the school provides descriptions of what they do, they provide documentation evidence about what they do, and then they host a site team for an on-site visit. That's where the peer review aspect comes into play because the people who come to those site visits are volunteers that are subject matter experts in management and administration, academic um, education, the practitioner side. Um, again, peers from our profession that go to our schools and provide those site visits. That's really a verification um, opportunity. The school gets to demonstrate that they do meet the standards in the way they described in their self-study. Um, there's a training that's involved if you want to be a volunteer for Compta, um, and we do subsidize the cost of that. So if anyone is interested in learning more about volunteering with Compta, I will invite you to contact me, and I'd be happy to talk with you about those opportunities. Um, it, it's it's a great way to be involved in the profession, um, and and really see what's happening in our schools all around the country. I know that's that's a, a volunteer work that I did that I enjoyed very much and it inspired me then to, um, to join the commission. The next slide uh, gives you some detail about a unique status that Comta offers. I've described to you our accreditation options, but endorsed curriculum is something we developed back in 2016 as a as a way for schools to have their curriculum recognized and honored, but also let that be a stepping stone towards that school um, eventually pursuing full accreditation of their program. Um, as I said, without accreditation being required in our profession at this time, um, it's really important that we have a way to establish those minimum consistent standards of educational quality. and and. Endorsed curriculum was one way for us to do that. And again, having the dual benefit of, of preparing a school then to um, go into a full accreditation um, pursuit. So endorsed curriculum is another, another avenue that we offer. And then the dual accreditation, the joint process. We launched this in 2017, specifically with another accrediting agency, ACCSC. They accredit career schools and colleges, and they recognize the value of programmatic accreditation for massage therapy programs, again, around that consistent educational quality. And so we worked together with them to develop and launch 
uh, this joint process whereby a school can be institutionally accredited with ACCSC and programmatically accredited with COMTA. We aligned our site visits so that schools that do the joint process only go through one site visit. And we also aligned our fees so that it was there was financial incentive. It was financially affordable for schools to pursue the joint process. Again, I invite anyone on the call that has questions or wants to learn more about that to um, contact me. Uh, I'd be happy to talk with you more. The next slide is, again, just a comparison of our endorsed curriculum status and our accredited institution or program um, status. And it just uh, reiterates some of what I've shared and, and gives you a little more detail. Of course, accreditation enables a school to be eligible to offer Title IV funding. Um, and it's much more in depth than the endorsed curriculum review process. The endorsed curriculum is handled at staff level, so it really doesn't even go before the commission for votes or decisions. Um, so for schools that might be a little nervous, trepidatious, or unsure about what accreditation is, endorsed curriculum is a wonderful step in that direction. Benefits of COMTA recognition, as Alyssa said at the start of our start of our presentation, you know, we really want to highlight the benefits of being involved with both of our organizations. And so with COMTA, we have direct benefits for our school members. Of course, the self-study process, how you can market um, the fact that your school is accredited or endorsed um, to maybe help you stand out among competition in your area. COMTA also provides opportunities for professional development, consultation, um, we assist schools in our process. We don't just leave them out there on their own to figure it out and cross their fingers that, uh, you know, that they're, you know, going about it in the right way. We provide assistance and support um, all along the process. And I, I truly believe that our schools take pride in that status when they work so hard to achieve it. Now, for the profession, um, we feel like our recognition benefits the public. Uh, because it helps them know that when they go to get a massage, that person has received a quality education. It elevates our profession in general because we include um, so many people from our community in our decision-making process. And of course, um, when a school is accredited, it meets the recommendations um, for licensing requirements. And again, that serves to um, support the public knowing that they're in safe and good hands when they go to get a massage. We also want COMTA to be a resource, um, again, for schools, for educators, for students, um, for our member organizations, and for the public. This would be on the next slide. Um, as I said, that was going to be a theme you'd hear from me throughout our time, is that really COMTA um, sees itself in a very holistic way. And I think that it also creates a nice um, natural relationship between our two organizations. Um, as you see there on the bullet point about for member organizations, partnerships and information sharing and a, a holistic approach to serving our professional community, much in the same way that integrative health serves a client centered approach and finds that, you know, when you have a team of practitioners serving your clients, um, your patients, that they really get the best care. And we hope that that's the same for our profession that when they utilize COMTA as a resource, they know they're getting um, a wide range of support and benefit um, from many different perspectives. And as you see there at the very bottom of that slide, um, as Cliff was mentioning, you know, well-trained and educated massage therapists are going to have more opportunities to engage with integrative health community. They're going to have the confidence, the skills, the professionalism, and the perspective to be able to um, really go into their professional work with a high, high level of, of, uh, of professional skills. The last slide that I have for you before I turn it over to Alyssa is, is um, something that we are very thrilled to share about some support that we've received from two of our professional uh, partners, stakeholder organizations in our profession, both the AMTA and the ABMP, our membership organizations, and they also have um, 
They have reinforced their support of our mission and what Compta does with their financial support as well and helping schools, subsidizing schools who want to pursue endorsed curriculum and accreditation. They have made opportunities available to help those costs. They recognize that that can sometimes be a burden, especially for small schools, and we are so very grateful for their support and hope that uh, more schools will take advantage of that and, and join our membership here over the next um, year, two years, three years. It's our mission, it's our vision to make sure all schools are accredited. So we appreciate the help of our partners and making that um, possible financially as well. So I think that um, concludes the Compta portion of this uh, presentation. I will say as I turn it over to Alyssa, I have the privilege of being um, involved in one of the working groups with ACIH. And it has been a wonderful, wonderful opportunity. I've learned so much and, uh, and that's just one of the benefits you will hear about um, as Alyssa and Dale share with you about ACIH. Fantastic. Thank you, Don. That was so educational and I really appreciate the detail that you gave us in your overview of Compta um, and the processes that um, are part of your uh, outreach and part of your program and your membership. Uh, and it was very helpful for me to learn so much in a quick uh, snapshot. You know, you covered a lot of ground, so I really appreciate it. I also, for the attendees right at this time, if anyone has a question before we move into ACIH, as I mentioned earlier, we'll have an opportunity to do Q&A at uh, the top of the hour, but if anyone has a question now, um, it, while it's fresh in your, in your mind about Compta's presentation, Renee, anyone? Um, okay. Not yet, but if you do have a question, <clears throat> excuse me, you should have a little hand button on your webinar dashboard and you can just click, click on that and I'll see you and uh, unmute you. Okay, good enough. Okay, so we're going to jump into, we're going to switch gears and talk specifically about the Academic Collaborative for Integrative Health and uh, our the lens that we look through in terms of our membership as a consortium. So we are a 501c3 nonprofit organization that began in 2004. Our website is integrativehealth.org. And for those of you who are not familiar with us, I do recommend that you uh, take a, a surf through our site a little bit. And uh, in particular, go to our page about our, his, our historical perspective, our history of accomplishments. Um, the, this is a, an organization that um, is uh, sort of, while it has, it has a lot of community support, it has a lot of uh, organizational support, and we, um, but we still do operate, as many nonprofits do, on a relatively small budget compared to the type of work product and projects that we've been able to actualize. And uh, if you take a look at the history of accomplishments on the site, um, it will speak to um, just how powerful this little engine that could of ACIH has been um, since its inception in 2004. So we are uh, a membership organization. We uh, have as our members currently 18 national organizations, over 30 individual colleges, universities, and schools, and 15 associate organizations. So our core members are the councils of colleges, the accrediting agencies, certification and testing organizations associated with integrative health and medicine fields. And those are the five professions with the US Department of Education recognized accrediting agency, acupuncture, chiropractic, massage therapy, naturopathic medicine, and direct entry midwifery. We also have a membership category of emerging and traditional world medicine professions. And uh, that, is, that includes currently yoga therapy, Ayurvedic medicine, homeopathy, somatic movement, and nutritional specialists. So just before I get into the, the vision and mission, the way that the board is structured is that 
the I'm going to go back to this previous slide. The the core members, right? These 18 national organizations, councils of colleges, etc., um, are have a representative that sits on our board, and uh, each of these organizations is therefore has a voice at the table representing the various professions um, out of these uh, core members. So it's really quite a it's a focused. Um, board in terms of the interprofessional education piece that we are um, that is how we this lens that we look through um, for the work that we do um, in various arenas uh, so um, our board is a, a membership board let's say our vision is a healthcare system that is multidisciplinary and enhances competence, mutual respect, and collaboration across all healthcare disciplines. And this system will deliver effective care that is patient centered, focused on health and well being, and readily accessible to all populations. And our mission is to enhance health by cultivating partnerships and advancing interprofessional education and collaborative practice. We do that by educating, collaborating, and advocating for the inclusion of the values, practices, and disciplines associated with integrative health, and in particular for collaborative, team-based, patient-centered care. This is our alphabet soup of our current membership, and I'm not going to go through um, each of these acronyms. Um, you are perhaps familiar with some of them. Here's Calm to Hear under accrediting agencies for our 2018 roster of uh, ACIH members. Here's our traditional world medicine and emerging professions group. Um, and then we have, as I mentioned, 30 uh, plus schools led by SCU and Whittier, California at the chancellor's level. That is um, the highest level of participation as a dues paying member that a school or university can have. Um, and SCU plays a large role in, um, in in how we are operating as a nonprofit now, which I'll get to in another slide. And then we do have individual members, and we welcome individual members um, onto um, our, our membership roster, and we have allied organizations that are also associate members. And so for our board, our, our core members, of course, um, that have a representative on the board, our board meets quarterly. And we have an annual strategy uh, setting session that is an in-person meeting. Um, we also have a uh, annual report um, or annual board meeting that is a webcast, and that's usually in December. We have that coming up in December to the community um, at large, and uh, that's going to be on December 12th this year. So as I mentioned, um, SCU is uh, playing a special role in, in terms of um, our individual schools and colleges in um, that membership category. Uh, John Scaringe, who is the president of SCU in Whittier, is also a member of our board. He's currently our treasurer. He's in the executive committee and has been involved with ACH, ACIH um, for many years. Uh, SCU is very focused on interprofessional education as so many of our schools are. And so it's a really nice match for us that actually we have a, a home base at SCU. And uh, this is new. We just moved um, into a physical office space in their um, academic uh, building, building A, for those of you who know SCU, uh, in May. So um, I go out there, I live in Los Angeles, and I go to Whittier one or two days a week when I'm in town um, to have visibility there, to connect with faculty and administration and students and uh, bounce ideas off of people. There's many uh, people who, faculty um, and administrators who are part of SCU and their programs there who are engaged in our work, uh, for instance, in our working groups. Um, so, and Beth Rosenthal will speak to that in a couple slides, but uh, this is um, a, new, a new sort of mutually reciprocal partnership, if you will, that um, has manifested uh, just since I joined in the spring, not due to my joining, but um, is a really nice opportunity for ACIH as a nonprofit to um, be involved with the school 
and uh, really have access to the resources, for instance, like the uh, Learning Resource Center. Um, they have a, a good library at SCU, and that's just one of the resources as a nonprofit that we are benefiting from by having this collaboration with the with the university. We also collaborate with other uh, consortia. So I mentioned the Integrative Health Policy Consortium. That was an organization that I was previously in ED with. They're on the right-hand side of your screen. Um, and uh, obviously, they're focused on health policy in our space. We do uh, and have done. Uh, the collaborative ACIH has been involved with IHPC um, over the years, and we continue to find ways to work together for the better good as we do with the Academic Consortium for Integrative Medicine and Health um, and with the Academy of Integrative Health and Medicine. And if you're not so familiar with these um, names or these organizations, take a look at, at um, these various consortia because um, they're, you know, as ACIH does, I mean, we really exist for the better good of the professions at large and moving them forward within the context of the mission and vision that I articulated earlier, and that is really so synced up with our membership, our core members and our associate members. I mean, we're all on the same page, but we are stronger together. So uh, here's an example of a collaborative uh, info, it's sort of an infographic that um, was a project between the four organizations that you can see um, listed on the bottom of the slide. Moving beyond medications, non-pharmacological approaches to pain management and well-being. This is available um, on our site under resources at integrativehealth.org. And uh, just an example of how we create tools, you know, either as a standalone organization or in conjunction with our members or other um, allied groups that are purposeful and helpful in moving the ball forward. Um, we're all on the same team and we all want the same outcome around patient-centered care, I think it's safe to say. <laughs> so the CEDR, this is a, a little snapshot of our third edition of the Clinicians and, cl clinicians and Educators Desk Reference on the integrative health and medicine professions. This is available um, as a um, soft cover book that can be part of your libraries or, or as an individual can be purchased um, online and uh, is available uh, also as a downloadable PDF from our from our website at integrativehealth.org. Um, so if you are unfamiliar with it, please check it out. But part of our membership benefit is that the CEDR, depending on what level of membership um, the, your organization were to enter into as an individual school or college um, in that category, the CEDR is um, is at least one and, and, and up to many multiples of the CEDR is available to you um, to be shipped to you and to your, um, your university or school um, if you become a member. And here's a little bit more about our membership benefits. Um, of course, being a member of a recognized national collaborative interprofessional educational organization that does have a strong national voice. Um, ACIH has worked very hard since its inception in having a seat at the table in places that count where our uh, unified voice can, can really be heard on behalf of the professions and uh, in particular about interprofessional education and interprofessional um, and interdisciplinary practice. Of course, uh, all members have recognition on our website and uh, are automatically on the list of distribution for our collaborator, which is our quarterly newsletter, quite an extensive publication um, highlighting not only news of interest in general in our fields, but also uh, of our membership. Um, so it's a nice way to sort of cross-pollinate ideas and uh, share about projects um, as they are advancing and progressing. Um, of course, again, opportunity to post about news through our collaborator and social media. And here's our uh, a mention of our working groups, um, which is a, a really, I would say, is part of the engine 
of ACIH and um, as in terms of the expression of the mission and vision in action, um, is the working groups are a powerful expression and um, actualization of, of interprofessional um, and collaborative project work. So um, I'm going to uh, turn this over. Beth, I have a couple slides here about working groups. And if you could um, speak to how they're constituted and um, give us a few examples for our attendees. Um, and I think Dale Healy was also going to speak to um, his experience involved in the working groups as a board member um, and, and representing Compta, because Dale Healy represents Compta, that would be helpful. So sure. Beth, do you want to start? And then maybe Dale, you could chime in. Sure. That, that would be great. Uh, thank you, Alyssa. And it, it's been a pleasure to hear more about Compta as well. Hello, everybody. I'm Beth Rosenthal, and I'm the director of working groups. I've been with the collaborative for more than 11 years. And it's exciting to, to see where we're at now with more and more collaboration between organizations. The working groups, as Alyssa said, they, they really are responsible for much of the work that the collaborative does. And it's composed of volunteers who are typically connected with the schools that, that, that are represented by the disciplines involved with the collaborative. I just took a quick look to see how many massage therapy spots we might have open on working groups. And as, as this um, very succinctly says that, that we have up to three members from each of our core disciplines on each working group. So we have three slots. And the way that it works is our co-chairs, of, of which Dale is one, and our board members are encouraged to to be the board members are encouraged to participate on on the working groups and neither the the co-chairs or the board members count towards that limit of three slots so on the education working group of, of which dale is our co-chair and don is a member thank you don for for uh, saying those uh, good things you did in the beginning we have a complete roster of massage therapists on the education working group for the time being, but things are always in flux. So if, if, if you or somebody you know is interested in the education working group, still let me know because when somebody moves off, then we're always looking for really great people to, to add on to the working group. In the clinical working group and in the research working group, we have two of the three slots filled for both of them, which means we have one opening in clinical, one opening in research working group. I think I'll stop there and ask Dale to talk about some of the projects and especially the project that he's been involved in. But please do, if there's any questions, raise your hand or put it in the chat is even better because then we can bring it up to everybody and respond. And uh, you can always contact me through, through the, Alyssa's email or information from our website. So thanks for this opportunity and I'll, I'll stop here. Thanks, Beth. Um, I'll keep this short because I know we're, we're running short on time a little bit, but uh, I'll just say it's been, uh, you know, absolute uh, incredible privilege to be able to serve, as I said earlier, with both of these organizations, but uh, specifically on the education working group as, uh, as the co-chair, um, uh, we we meet uh, four or five times a year, something like that. Oftentimes, not in person, but uh, or, uh, it's a, a webinar format, and uh, through uh, you know the opportunity to connect with folks from across disciplines on those working group calls is uh, just a tremendous benefit, I think, to of being uh, connected with uh, with the collaborative. Uh, so, as Beth mentioned, we've got uh, the the, the working groups are engaged in uh, numerous projects, and uh, I think in the interest of time, I won't read through the, all of the ones that are on the screen there, but uh, you can kind of get a sense of uh, the, the flavor of, uh, of what those, some of those projects are, um, are like. Uh, the one that I'm personally involved in is this hospital-based massage therapy-specific competencies. Uh, some many of you may know uh, M.K. Brennan, and Carolyn Tag uh, MK was uh, is a former 
uh, president of the of the AMTA. Uh, the three of us, along with Beth Rosenthal, have uh, been working for several years surveying hospitals that have massage therapy programs and developing competencies that uh, we think massage therapists, not, not just we think, but uh, what the community believes that massage therapists should know and be able to do to practice safely in a hospital environment. And, uh, and I've had the opportunity to go to different conferences and present these competencies. And, uh, you know, it's just a project that uh, were it not for the collaborative, I'm, I'm not sure that, uh, you know, what other, how it, how it may have come up otherwise. So just the support that the, the collaborative and the working groups and the framework that they provide for networking across professions and to engage in projects like, uh, like the hospital-based massage therapy competency one or the other ones that you see on the screen. Um, just a, a, a very cool thing. So uh, maybe I'll leave it there for now and we can see what else. We can turn it back over to Alyssa or Beth. Uh, there's this is Alyssa. Uh, Beth had um, a couple slides back indicated what was available uh, in terms of um, openings. Um, I don't know how current this slide is, Beth, based on what you had said a couple slides prior. Um, but here is Beth's. Oops, sorry. Beth's information is here. Uh, B Rosenthal at IntegrativeHealth.org. And uh, she, uh, I know, be happy to communicate with you offline um, by email if you have an interest in knowing more about the working groups and you can uh, take it from there. Anything else you'd like to add, Beth? Thanks, Alyssa. I, that, that things do change, as I mentioned. So this is not current as of this moment. We do have one opening on clinical working group, one opening on research working group, and no openings on education working group right now. Okay, very good. Um, I have in here a couple slides about our current projects. I'm only going to speak for a couple minutes. Um, it is 12.53 by my clock, Pacific time. So I'm literally going to just speed through these. And um, if you have an interest in knowing more about our current projects, either the Global Forum or uh, the course that we are in the process of um, developing on a conceptual level at this point, because we're working on funding, I'm going to speak to you in the next slide with the consortium, which is the, 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 uh, the organization that we collaborate with that has membership in academic, from academic medical centers. Um, and then we can go to questions if anyone has questions and then we'll close. But uh, we, are, we have been uh, members of the National Academy of Medicine Global Forum on innovations in health professional education for the past seven years. Um, we are going into our eighth year of membership with this forum. And why is this important? Because uh, it is a venue um, in which ACIH is representing integrative uh, health, integrative health, and therefore also our focus, interprofessional education at the table which otherwise would we, there would be no representation for integrative health slash medicine at, in this particular venue unless um, ACH would continue their membership, our membership um, um, with this with the group from National Academy of Medicine Global Forum. So uh, there's about 50 other organizations and they are very conventional, very mainstream, like the American Medical Association, the Association of uh, Physical Therapy. Um, the Occupational Therapist Association, the Registered Nurse Association, et cetera. I mean, that's just um, a handful because there's a, a roster of 50. But it's an important um, place for us to, uh, to have a voice. And we've been able to cultivate a lot of relationships and be involved in planning workshops, um, at two of which are listed here. Uh, the April 2018 workshop uh, about organizational and individual resilience, health and well-being, um, and a workshop coming up in December in DC, um, the role of non-pharmacological approaches to pain management, a workshop. So we're all, you know, these are all topics that are of interest to ourselves and our colleagues and, um, and, and those that we work with. And so um, 
that's what we will continue to do moving forward with the global forum is to be engaged on that level and you can find the the um the recordings in from uh the archive from the april workshop on our site under resources and also at the global forum site um, and these are usually one and a half day workshops they're free to the public and they uh in person and they are um free in terms of the live streaming uh, so I know for the non-pharma approaches to pain, it's um, there's still uh, live streaming registration available. We are working on this course, um, just switching gears with the consortium. Uh, that's the Academic Consortium for Integrative Medicine and Health, which has 72 uh, schools and universities that have an, that are academic medical centers that have an integrative uh, medicine. Um, program and or clinic on site and we're working on a course that includes a training component in interprofessional education for all health professionals who work in the integrative medicine and health settings it's to help and I've heard this a lot um, from practitioners who are trained in our schools and uh, and and then graduate and want to work because there's an opportunity that presents itself or otherwise they had you know planned to in a conventional in or outpatient setting and that there's charts there's coding there's uh there's cultural uh differences or challenges um in in working in those environments so this course is really meant in a nutshell to address those um some of those challenges that are not otherwise met um, on a curriculum level when um, students are, are working on their professional path. Um, so I'm not going to go into the details there, but we are in the development stage um, and in the fundraising stage uh, to, to get this course um, into the curriculum development stage. So having said that, um, I think we are a few minutes out from our close. Do we have any questions or comments from anyone? And any closing thoughts from any of our speakers? I, I'll just say, this is Dale. I'll just say thank everybody again for being on the call and just maybe, you know, one word of, uh, you know, there's, we presented a lot of information today, yes. but, and, uh, you know, it's, so I'd encourage you to go back and, and research both of our organizations a little bit. And again, I, I guess just a word of encouragement for those of you that represent schools. I think that's probably most folks that are on the call. Um, you can do this. I mean, whether it's endorsed curriculum or participation in one of the working groups, I just encourage you to uh, uh, move the profession forward by getting plugged into uh, one or both of our organizations at whatever level you're, you're able to commit to at this time. And uh, and we're not, you know, the other thing I, I guess very brief comment I want to make is that uh, when we talk about high standards or, you know, participation in the global forum or, uh, you know, accreditation, um, a lot of people here, I think, um, you know, expanding standards and more education and such. And that's not it at all. We represent uh, massage therapy schools and organizations at all levels, uh, all the way from entry level um, all the way up. So uh, it is possible for for, for everyone to participate. It's, we've got a we've got a big tent. So. <laughs> Fantastic note to end on. Any other comments from my speakers? Alyssa, okay. um, Randy Clark has a question. Okay, go ahead. Please go ahead. All right. So I'm Randy Clark. For those of you who don't know me, I'm the president of the Center for Nurse Max Studies, which is a CompTIA accredited school. Um, so I have a couple of questions. Uh, one, first of all, I, I didn't know much about the collaborative before this, and, and so thank you. Um, it sounds like something perfect for our organization, and, and at some level we will get involved. I just don't know which way yet. Mm -hmm. um, and so probably my first question is for, for someone representing the collaborative. I am working presently on my first uh, interprofessional education paper. Um, and I didn't know if you had any resources for someone doing that uh, that could help in putting this together um, or if if you have writers or anything like is there is there a resource you have for someone writing a, an interprofessional education paper is the first question. Mm -hmm. 
Um, so I'll let you answer that first because the next one's really more for the CompTIA side of people. Okay. Very organized. Thank you, Randy. Appreciate you um, coming forward with your question about the interprofessional education paper that you are writing. And I'd like to, uh, if Beth Rosenthal is still with us, um, if you could address that, Beth. I'm here and I, I missed the gist of the question. I'm so sorry. What what okay. was it? And then I'll no, because I, I'm actually I I think you're better versed to um to address Randy's question, which is that he uh is writing a paper on interprofessional education and he uh -huh. is uh, wondering what sort of resources we might be able to provide as an organization to him specifically in that in that from that objective. Okay. Okay. Well, thanks, Randy, and thanks for uh, thinking this would be perfect for your school because, of course, we agree. So we're very very interested in um, uh, working with you and inviting you to membership. I would invite you to first browse through our site and just see what resources, what products, what papers we've already done or we have links to, and then send me your more specific question if you can, which I can then forward on to all of our working group members and just reach out to, to all of our networks to see how best what may exist that that uh, that we could answer your specific question. Excellent. Okay. All right, I can do that. I will I will send you an email there, Beth. So thank you. Yeah, uh, that's B Rosenthal at integrativehealth.org. Yep. Got it. Go ahead. Um, all right, so second question is we are kind of a, and this is our school is, is kind of already integrative in that um, we have a, a unique massage therapy program um, that also um, is a personal training program. It's, a, it's kind of a, a hybrid program of both its massage and personal training. Um, and so they're they're able to sit for both the personal training certificate and the massage uh, license when they graduate. Um, we are running into, and this is more of a just throw it out there. Anybody who's run into this problem before, uh, we are running into a problem with the Department of Education, who doesn't have a box for us. Um, they don't have any box to put us in, and so we they want to put us in the massage therapy box which then we have too many hours in our program because we are teaching more than just massage therapy. Um, and so I don't know, has anyone ever dealt with a, a com combined program before and how did they deal with the Department of Education? And has CompTIA ever dealt with a school um, dealing with a similar problem in the past? Um, hi, Randy. This is Dawn. Uh, hi, Dawn. You know, I, it's a really great question. And off the top of my head, I can't think of any school that I'm familiar with that has had the same issue. And I think it's in large part because our scope, Compta's scope, is, is so specific to massage, body work, or aesthetics programs. So, yeah. you know, any school that would be pursuing recognition for a different type of program would have to do so through different channels um but gosh yeah in terms of what box the department of ed is putting you in that that is a bigger uh a bigger question and i think you're wise to kind of put it out in a bigger context of what have other schools done um are you trying to get that side of your program accredited or recognized or well, I mean, our programs they, mm -hmm. right and we got they right. got it accredited the whole program mm -hmm. but now they've come back and said wait we don't have a box to put you in Hmm. Um, so well, for as far as financial years now, we've gotten full um, support for Title IV for mm -hmm. all of the, the entire program, and now they're coming back and saying, "Well, we can only do the massage side because we don't have a place for a hybrid program." Randy, I I think um, this question deserves more than what we think right here on the spot, and I think we ought to dig in a little farther and um, and answer you okay. one on one. Think that'll work? Well, I figured I had the smartest people in the <laughs> on the call, and I figured you guys just would know this off the top of your head. Um, you know, someone of your stature, Cliff, I don't know. Uh -huh. um, just thought you had all the answers. But no, um, yeah, I would love to set up a time to talk to one or group or whoever, what would be appropriate um, as to what 
you know, what could be done here is, you know, is I don't feel like I maybe I'm the first school to ever deal with this, but I don't feel like I am. Mm -hmm. um, and yeah. so just trying to figure out what others have done. We'll set up a time. Yeah. Okay. Appreciate that, Cliff. Yep. Sounds like we need to create a new box. Yes. <laughs> yes. Because, I mean, it fits directly into the integrative health piece. Um, right. And that's why I thought this might be a good group um, to, to raise this is that we have integrative health people here as well mm -hmm. uh, that, that could chime in if they had run into anything like that. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. Well, I'm so glad this is Alyssa that you, um, that you raised um, both of these questions and this is where um, so much value um, lives, you know, is in the sharing of ideas and airing of questions and concerns and um, sharing of resources. So uh, great that you, you brought it to our attention, both on the ACIH side of the fence and Compta and um, can take it from there. So it sounds like you'll have follow up um, both from Beth and from Cliff. Um, okay. So uh, that's great. And Renee, do we have, we're a little over time now, but did you have any other raised hands that would like to, uh, to come forward? Nope. All right. Very good. Any closing thoughts from our other speakers? Besides Dale, thank you. You had a wonderful closing thought. Uh, Cliff or Don? Well, I think I will just close the, the whole shebang here. Um, I, I've just really enjoyed uh, the wealth of information that I've heard this afternoon. Um, and, I, and I personally always search for relevance in any presentation that I'm uh, uh, part of or, or or listening to, and I trust uh, that everyone found found that here today. Um, I really hope that this webinar has given uh, you information you can use in charting your school's future. Uh, if you haven't yet established a relationship and a partnership uh, with Compta and ACIH, I strongly encourage uh, everyone to do so. Uh, our resources are great, and uh, the future is certainly bright. Uh, further, I believe that the, the public and the industries we serve expect this of us. Um, so let's let's make it so. Um, only you can decide how to lead your school into the future, but I hope you'll allow us to shine a light on that path to, to help you get there. So I really want to thank um, all of you for participating today, and we all look forward to continued interaction uh, as we march forward in the future. So good afternoon. Yeah. Thank you. Good afternoon, all. Thank, Thank you, you, everybody. Thank you. Bye-bye. Yeah.